some of the leaders of God's Missionary Church have had a vision for a Bible school in the Penns Creek area. Finally, after quite some discussion and the purchase of land, the dream of our leaders became a reality. On the afternoon of July 31, 1965, a large group of ministers and lay people who were in attendance at the Penns Creek Camp Meeting gathered together on the hilltop where the school was to be erected for the groundbreaking service. The recording which you are about to hear is a reproduction of a tape recording of that service taken by one of our general board members. In the background, you will hear instrumentalists who were members of the Lebanon Valley Gospel Band who were guests of the Penns Creek Camp that day. You will hear voices of people who were moved with enthusiasm while the service was in progress. Some people cried, some laughed, some shouted for joy. This recording is not meant to be technically perfect, but it does reveal the events of the day. God placed his approval upon the service by causing a picture which was taken of that service to be marked by what appears to be a holy flame of fire which rests upon the open Bible as the scriptures were read by our leaders. The singing was spontaneous. As people were moved of the spirit, songs and choruses were enjoined by all present. The general superintendent, Reverend George I. Straub, at this point calls the members of the general board together for the groundbreaking ceremony. It appears that Reverend Truman Wise is to read the scriptures. While in preparation for this solemn event, the instrumentalists play the song, Sound the Battle Cry. While the song was played, Reverend Arthur Thomas, a general board member, took a picture from his camera. Reverend Thomas was pale and sober-faced as he handed the picture to me. I was moved with a holy fear as I passed it on to the general superintendent. The picture was clear. Directly over the Bible, which was held by Reverend Wise, there appeared to be a visible sign of God's approval upon our plans for Penview Bible Institute. A flame-like appearance, which was not noticeable by the naked eye, was on this picture. All in attendance were affected by this phenomenon. A holy reverence settled upon the group present. This spirit permeated the atmosphere until saved and unsaved were moved with a holy fear. It seemed like representatives from heaven were sent by God to witness this great occasion. This is a sure sign of God's divine approval upon Christian education. And we have something on this picture hovering over us right now that uh, I, I'd, like for, I'd like for you to see this. It looks like a halo of glory. That is a 
deeply by the witness of God's presence, Reverend Truman Wise reads the scriptures. I'm reading from 2 Chronicles, chapter 6. Then said Solomon, The Lord hath said that he would dwell in thick darkness. But I have built a house of habitation for thee, and a place for thy dwelling forever. And the king turned his face, and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought thee forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among all the tribes of Israel to build a house in that my name might be there, and neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. But I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name might be there, and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David my father, for as much as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst dwell in that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build a house for my name. 
The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he has spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised. And I built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it have I put the ark, wherein is the covenant of the Lord, and he made, uh, that he made with the children of Israel. And he stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hands. For Solomon hath made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the congregation of Israel and spread forth his hand <laughs> toward heaven. Reverend William Rockow, also a member of the General Board, has just concluded his prayer. Reverend S.D. Heron, president of Hobe Sound Bible College, 
who was a camp meeting speaker for Penn's Creek Camp Meeting, now speaks for the occasion. God, by the, I felt to tell you that this was a red letter day, but God, by the seal of his presence, has made it far more than anything that I can say to you. I thought of the passage and standing here on the hilltop where God told Moses, he said, See thou, saith he, that you build all things according to the pattern showed to thee on the mount. And God has put his signal seal here. To me, to me, the most important is not necessarily what we show on the film of a camera. No, sir. But the inner witness of God That's it. That's it. our own heart. <laughs> Outward signs and symbols fade. Yes, sir. But the inward reality of Amen. God. Amen. And we have a more sure Amen. guarantee of his presence Amen. than uh, any sign or symbol. We have the unfailing, sure word of God. Amen. Praise his name. Amen. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Lo, I am with thee always even to the end of the age. Yes. The pattern that God gave to Moses on the top of the mount was a pattern for a tabernacle in which would dwell the symbol of the presence of God. Yes. We are met here today to break ground and to inaugurate the institution not of an earthly tabernacle where there would be, as there was in the days of Mo Moses, a mere symbol of God's presence, but we are here to inaugurate the establishment of a Christian school whose purpose, whose aim, whose ultimate objective is the formation of temples of God in the little lives and hearts of young men and women and boys and girls. So truly, we are duplicating the task that Moses had. He was to rear a tabernacle for the habitation of God. We are to raise up temples like these for the habitation of God Almighty, that God can dwell. That's what God has these here for, not to make dollars, not to eat food, not to live in houses and be clothed, but to be habitations of God through the Spirit. And our job as parents and as Christian educators is not simply to enlighten minds, not simply to train hands, but to prepare, prepare temples for the habitation of God Almighty. There is no higher task. There is no greater objective. This is as sacred as any church you have ever dedicated. This is as dedicated to as high a purpose as any church you have ever dedicated, the tab meeting tabernacle or any other. And God has put his seal. Let us be faithful to build according to the pattern to show to us here on the mount. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Before we proceed, I, I might give you a brief history of the background of what is taking place today. For years, we have talked about a school. However, it seemed like uh, it never developed. We met and talked it over, but it seemed like... Uh, uh, it seemed like we, uh, we weren't uh, of one mind in this area until about a year ago. God began to work, and God began to speak, and we felt the Spirit of the Lord leading. And we tried to purchase land across the way, to the right over across the road, as you see, but it seemed like it didn't open. And again, we began to pray and ask God to help us. We still felt like the Lord wanted a school here in the area. And Mr. Knapp and his wife, <coughs> here with us this afternoon on the hilltop, sent a message that if we so desired that he would sell us this plot of ground, which he did. Thank God. We came in here in the cold weather and surveyed it and staked it out. Yes, sir. And we praised God while we were doing it. Amen. We had a vision in the midst of that cold, uh, blustery weather of what we see here today. We were looking forward to this hour. And now God gave us the ground. We have the title. And now from here on in, it is entirely up to us 
to keep in step with God, yes. to keep in step with the Spirit, to do our part. And if we will all cooperate in this area, yes, sir. I believe by next year this time, there will be another gathering here on the hilltop. And that will be the great dedication service of Jesus carries and we live. To dedicate the house that we are uh, sort of, in a faint way, visualizing in our mind today. And brethren, I believe that God is pleased with the move we are making. Amen. I feel the encouragement of the Spirit within my yes. heart. Yes. Brother Scott speaking at the present time. Within, that what we are doing today is in harmony with His Word. Yes. It's in divine order. Yes. It's according to the leadings of the, the Holy Ghost. And I feel this day like we ought to all look heavenward and Godward yes. and thank God for this move. And it may mean the salvation of your boy, your girl, or some grandson or some granddaughter out in the future. Yes, sir. I pray God will bless us. And now I'm going to, I'm going to break this ground for this institution. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. And what we do is not for any honor and glory of our own. It's strictly for his service. And we're doing it with an eye single to his glory. Brother Heron, I'd like for you to take a spade of dirt out of that. I want you to have a part in this. Over to God. Praise the Lord. Brethren, I'd like for you, Brother Wise, to take a spade of dirt out of this. Brother Thomas. Men of this school board and general board, we have undertaken a great task here. It involves a great responsibility. Uh, let's see, we have another general. Brother Rockdown. General board members, along with the guest speaker, Reverend S. D. Heron, participate in the actual groundbreaking. It is an occasion long to be remembered in the minds of those in attendance. I don't know how you both feel, but I feel something searching through my heart. Let her, uh, let her. Brother Kenneth Walker. Thank you, brethren. Welcome, welcome. It is a prayer of God's Missionary Church and Penview Bible Institute that this recording will bring honor and glory to our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. May God continue to bless all those laboring in the area of Christian education.